This video will show what's behind the fenders above the dualies on the Jayco Seneca. We have the 37 FS from the 2019, and then you can see what Jeremy's doing to provide more insulation and kind of do some repairs under there. So that's the black tank. That's the black tank. You can see there's a um, hot and uh, cold water line. Those are your main cold hot water lines that run to the kitchen all the way over from the uh, wet bay. So those are not insulated. Uh, you also have a two inch gray line there. That's a plumb uh, uh, drain that's going this way. That goes over the gray tank. Um, you can see there are gaps over there. They did attempt to um, fill that with foam, but it did not adequately work. Uh, and there's no insulation around the actual black tank at all, there is the vent work coming through. So if you're running your propane heater, um, you would end up with some heat around the black tank in this compartment, but not adequate enough for that type of winter camping we're gonna be doing. And if you look over to the right here, you'll see there's a pretty big gap. So they actually had to cut through the frame there. And uh, that's where they got into the um, under storage compartment here to the right that then goes up into the uh, kitchen area. So that's a pretty massive hole there. Um, and if you've seen our other video about the mice infestation, that's... Yeah. That this is where they were coming. This was the number one spot where they came through. So they, the mice made it into the black tank compartment, likely from inadequate foam. Um, they crawled right along the vent work and then the vent work went right into the under storage compartment in here. Along the wall there, we found evidence that they had been running along the vent work, which is pretty common. They'll follow the heat and then uh, made it up into the upstairs compartment. Um, so uh, definitely an area that everyone's gonna wanna look at. I would encourage you to take this fender skirt down. So this is the fender skirt here. I took that down and then this fiberglass just opens up and I just used a ladder to support it just prop your ladder up against the tire there and then you got it so some support this is fiberglass so watch your eyes and face and whatnot and uh yeah i mean you can see there's some areas opportunities here for improvement in terms of sealing everything up um so i'm going to add a couple of things in here first i'm going to add insulation around the walls either side of the black tank and underneath. I'm gonna add my sensor for my Garnet Industries sensor. Uh, that's the sea level two monitor. Um, and then I'm going to put a, a foam pipe insulator along the, the, the red and blue here. It goes all the way across. I'm gonna take a, the, uh, the same thing off on the other side so I can access both sides. Um, and inside of that, I'll run some heat tape, which will keep those water lines really nice and warm. Um, it was just on the other side of these water lines here that I found the cracks in those right angles. Real poor design to put a right angle where it was anyhow. But nonetheless, there was some leakage there. And you can see over there, there's some plastic right angles. The last thing I wanna do is close this up with some more junk plastic right angles. So I'll take those out and replace them with the brass fixtures so that we know that they're safe and that they won't leak uh, as that had happened before. Um, what else can I tell you? So how did you get, how did you get that yeah, fender so skirt down? The fender skirt uh, props up inside here like that, okay? So there's a couple of screws that go back there. You can see, I think there are three screws back here in the back side. And there's a, then here I actually took the, um, uh, the mud flap down. There's a, an anterior front and back mud flap took the uh, front one down um, it's got a little bracket that it hangs on that actually sits up against here and holds the fender um, skirt in place uh, so once I got that down it's pretty simple um, there were only a couple of brackets here there was this one here and then that one on the other side there those are the two brackets that secured the actual uh, fender uh, against the frame so, you know, I mean, I don't know how many screws I pulled out. You can see you know, maybe a total of 20, 20 screws or something like that. Um, not a big deal to do this. This, you know, took me a half hour to disassemble. Uh, and then, you know, obviously you get a beautiful view of the inside. 
Um, and there's some ways you can see, if you look along here, this was brilliantly uh, Jayco designed. You can see that this little aluminum piece of framing here that, that isn't even attached to anything. Um, so that's just sitting there and they've, they've fixed that plastic. But you can see that it's warped and there was no ins there's no foam or anything like that. There's no glue placed on the plastic itself. Um, so pretty chintzy. Most of those screws are pulling off. So I have an opportunity to make this better. I, uh, one of my friends is a welder. I think we'll probably weld a piece in there uh, that attaches from this side over here. You can see where that frame comes down over to this side and then have a nice solid piece of uh, metal that we can mount the plastic to. And, uh, and then we'll seal it up again with some foam. And this, just so you can see, this is the area where the dualies are at. So we're in the back of the RV is where this panel's at that he's pulled up to access everything here. Oh, I forgot to mention this. This is another piece of plastic that just goes on the top. Of the oh, sorry. Skirt. Um, and uh, so this, this attaches like that. Here's how he, he's been propping the, using the little telescopic ladder, which is awesome and we use for so many reasons, but he's using that to hold this up since I haven't actually been out here helping him out most of the time. So this is on the other side of the fender, on the driver's side of the vehicle. Yeah, so this is the, this is the uh, driver's side and you can see here, they did wrap around some vent work and, and here, this is, Incredible to me, they actually have some air output there um, from the vent. So they actually, from the vent work, built a little bit of air output here. That's only going to work when it's propane, though. So, you know, if you're, if you got your unit in storage, it's not going to be able to heat this uh, area because you're not running propane unless you have some sort of a ventilation system. Um, you know, the there's many, many holes. So up here, you can see there's no, absolutely no foam. Um, up uh, over there, there's an electrical cord going through, no foam. Uh, over there, there's a pipe coming through, no foam. Um, so lots of opportunity here for mice. I mean, it, it's pretty much a highway. No way you could, you could defend every hole that you can see inside, but if you can't get into these compartments, um, you need to start with these compartments if you're gonna stop mice. And these were plastic joints? Yeah, those are plastic joints. I'm just gonna cut those out. Um, here I can show you. I bought these brass joints here, um, half inch, and then uh, just have these half inch uh, pinch clamps. Um, you do need a tool here. This is a, a really valuable tool. Um, it's the, uh, yeah, we can put a, a link for it, but the Apollo PEX, uh, it goes three eighths inch to one inch. And you just squeeze it until um, you see this little purple light go or blue light, and then you know that you got it tight enough. So here's an example of, let's remove this. So I'll just cut this out. And then he's kind of a ratcheting strap, a rap, ratcheting dude there. Honestly, these guys can probably come up a little bit anyway. Let's cut this down a little bit. What I do is I wrap them huge tape fan to wrap them with tape. Silicone creates, you know, as, as things heat and cool, especially PEX dude, they, they can have little leaks around them and the silicone just kind of fills in that. out there. I've done a lot of plumbing work on our farm. And, uh, I always use the grease on my fingers to be able to tighten that up before I put it in. And I don't clean it up because I don't care about this. And so then I put this up here like that. Turn on my 
my way so that, that way I have it ready to go. And this ratcheting guy goes on there just kind of like this. Turn this down a little ways. You can see that plastic piece flies off. And you can't see it from this angle. light on that side. Unfortunately, you didn't see that one. You can edit this later, right? Yep. So I don't want to worry. That's it. Now we got some decent connections there that will stand the test of time as opposed to that plastic crap. Um, and these kind of go back up in there. So. Okay. Been busy? Wow. Yeah, so I put, that's fireproof insulation. It's mineral wool underneath. And then I put, uh, uh, I covered the pipes. Those are two inch uh, pipe covers. Um, I have some of this stuff that I'm gonna just lay on top of the, this is two inch, and then I just need to wrap it um, in strips. No, just kind of do it like that. This is fiberglass, so it's nasty stuff. But, and then we'll put some tape over top of that. Um, and then I'm gonna put a heater on this side, on this uh, side here, and then I'll put a heater on the other side. Run, I'm gonna run brand, brand new uh, 10 gauge wire from my battery bank over here for each one so I can have a switch on each one. And then I put the kill mat here. Um, then there's some gaps that you have to fill in there around the kill mat with SOS. And then on top of the SOS, I put the foam to hold the SOS in place. Um, that'll prevent the, the combination of SOS plus um, or steel wool plus uh, the uh, foam is, is really helpful. This is a fireproof foam, which foam is generally not going to ignite, but um, I feel like the fireproof is always a good idea, especially in a wheel wall like this. So, yeah. So, when I get this uh, fender back up, the fender skirt, I will uh, fill the whole fender skirt with insulation on top of it. Um, and then I'm gonna run heat tape through here as well as the, the black tank heaters. Uh, so we will be ready for really cold uh, weather. Cool, Alaska, here we come. Okay, you can see this is more in progress. I got um, more pipe to insulate here. I'm gonna put some sort of a filter on top of that little um, heat duct that they've uh, put in there. more of the pipes and then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll, uh, I'll put a little bit more insulation as you can see I'll slide a little more insulation in there and then on top of the fender flare I'll do more of that or fender screw I'll do more of that. Um, and then you can see down below here I wrapped each of the under storage compartments. That's a fireproof sound barrier uh, that they use in the front of vehicles and then on the inside of the vehicle I'm going to rip up the carpet and then put the foam down on the inside so it will be not only will it be sound barrier, it'll be heat barrier um, to keep it cool in the summer and, uh, and the winter. Right, so here what I'm doing is I'm just gonna put this over top and I wanna get this as close to the opening as possible. Now this is spray foamed over here, but I had to cut some of the spray foam down because I put in the new brass fittings. And in order to do that, I need a little bit more wiggle room. Optimally, you wanna get this as hubbed as you can and then you're just pulling these little tabs in here and these yellow tabs contact tabs and then it actually seals itself um, which you know they have ones that don't do this um, I've used those I really like the self sealing like this I just find that they're very easy to use they give you a little bit of seal to it so you don't have to tape the whole thing 
I remember doing this in the olden days. You'd have to tape the whole thing, and it was just a pain. So you're just sealing that up, and then you tighten it. Pull these guys. Tighten it up. There you go. There you have it halfway done. That's the end of this update. Thanks so much for watching. If this was useful for you, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe for more videos about traveling in a Jayco Seneca, modifications, visiting the national parks, and all sorts of other fun. We're also on Instagram and Facebook at RV Homeschool. Thanks so much for watching.